Welcome to the lecture on electronegativity and IMFs, which is short for intermolecular forces. And intermolecular forces are forces that are between molecules or little compound units um, rather than bonds that hold atoms together. So there's a difference between bonds and intermolecular forces. Bonds are holding atoms together in molecules or compounds. And IMFs or intermolecular forces are forces that are holding or attractions that are holding molecules to each other. So let's take a look and see how this works. First, we're going to start by talking about ionic compounds. Remember, ionic compounds are metals and nonmetals, and they have a transfer of electrons. So with this transfer of electrons, we get what we call full charges, right? Because the metal is going to lose his valence electron to the nonmetal, so the metal becomes positive and the nonmetal becomes negative. For example, we've got uh, sodium chloride. So sodium is our metal and chlorine is our nonmetal. And if we take a look at our electronegativity difference between um, sodium and chlorine, chlorine has an electronegativity value of 3.5, while sodium has an electronegativity value of only 0 0.9. So that electronegativity difference is 2.6. And if you remember from before, um, anytime there's an electronegativity difference of 2.1 or greater, we call that an ionic bond. Okay. Um, so between chlorine and sodium, we've got an ionic bond where sodium is going to give his valence electron to chlorine. So sodium becomes a positive, a full positive charge, and chlorine becomes a full negative charge. Now, if we have two sodium chloride, chloride um, compounds next to each other, they're going to attract, and that's what we call an intermolecular force. So this green arrow is representing the attraction between the two sodium chloride compounds. Um, so, because chlorine is negatively charged, it's going to attract the positive side of um, the sodium in another or a different sodium chloride um, compound. <clears throat> so this attraction, because they are full positive and negative charges, is very, very strong. Um, and remember, it is not a bond between the um, sodium chloride particles, all right? It's an attraction. So um, for example, this little line here between sodium and chlorine, that represents the bond between the two atoms, but the little dashes here represents that intermolecular force um, between the two molecules there, okay? So this intermolecular force, since it's full charges, um, full positive and full negative is very, very strong. Um, and because this is very strong, um, ionic compounds typically are solids at room temperature because they are going to be um, holding, you know, or attracted very strongly to their neighbors. And so there's not gonna be a lot of wiggle room. So they're usually gonna be solids at room temperature. So that's um, the intermolecular forces between ionic compounds. Now let's take a look at covalent compounds. So remember, covalent compounds are nonmetals with nonmetals. So we're working on just the right-hand side of that staircase on our periodic table. Anytime we have nonmetal hooking up with a nonmetal, um, we're going to have a covalent compound. But um, as we remember from the different types of bonds, there's actually two different types of covalent compounds. We have polar covalent, um, which we're going to see here, and then nonpolar covalent on the next slide. So polar covalent uh, means that even though those electrons are shared, they're shared unequally. So one of the atoms is pulling on those electrons more than the other. And if we're taking a look at um, water, <clears throat> water is H2O, so we have two H's hooking up with oxygen. Um, remember here we've got the electronegativity difference um, between these guys is 0 0.9, right? So the oxygen is um, 3, and uh, the hydrogen has an electronegativity difference of 2.1, and so the difference is 0 0.9. So um, if we were to draw our polarity arrows, then um, oxygen would be pulling more on those electrons. So he's hogging it more, so he's going to be a slight negative charge, whereas the hydrogens are going to be a slight positive charge, right? Um, <clears throat> 
And that's because, remember, these are not full charges because oxygen is not fully taking away hydrogen's electrons. They're still sharing, um, but it's sharing unfairly. Oxygen is pulling or hogging the electrons more than hydrogen. Okay, so this um, sets up a part of the, or the molecule having a slight negative end and a slight positive end. Um, so if we take a look at um, two water molecules next to each other, right? So if I draw another water molecule over here with our H2O, um, and we have, again, oxygen is slightly negative and the hydrogens are slightly positive, what we're going to see is a an attraction between the slightly positive end of one molecule and the slightly negative end of another molecule. And so they're going to kind of attract. I'll put little hearts, okay? Um, they're going to attract and they're going to stick together. Um, again, it is not a bond, right? So it's not a bond. A bond happens between atoms, okay? Which is very different. So um, the a bond is between atoms Intermolecular forces are between molecules, right? So remember, inter means between, and then molecular is molecule. So this is an intermolecular force. The slightly positive charge um, or slightly positive side of one particle of water is attracted, but it does not bond to the slightly negative side of another water molecule, okay? So polar covalent molecules, um, because they do have that attraction to each other, are usually what we call liquids at room temperature. Um, so it's not, this attraction is not as strong as ionic um, compounds, um, but it is pretty strong and it's strong enough to hold together these kinds of um, substances as liquids at room temperature. Okay, but if you um, were to add heat to them, Right? So if you add heat to water, eventually, um, if you add enough energy, um, what's going to happen is that the intermolecular forces, okay, these little hearts are going to break apart, all right? And um, you're going to convert the liquid into gas. And we're going to um, see how that works um, in a couple of class periods when we talk about phase changes. Uh, but just know that when we have a phase change, we are not breaking bonds, okay? So we're not breaking the bonds between these guys. The bonds are still holding on between the atoms. What we are breaking is this little love connection, okay, between the molecules themselves um, when we have a phase change, so that intermolecular force. All right, last but not least here, we've got nonpolar covalent. So again, um, covalent always means two nonmetals hooking up to make a compound, um, two or more nonmetals. We can have lots of um, atoms in some of these complex um, molecules in, in uh, nature. But in particular, nonpolar covalent share their electrons equally. So these guys are the nice guys. They're going to share equally. And so because they share equally, there are no charges whatsoever, none. Right? There's no slight positive or slight negative ends. There's no full positive or full negative ends. These guys are living in kind of like perfect harmony. Um, and remember, when we're talking about figuring out if it's nonpolar or polar covalent, we have to look at that electronegativity difference. If the electronegativity difference is between 0 and 0.49, we call that nonpolar. So here we're going to um, take a look at the... Um, molecule chlorine gas, all right, which is Cl2. And um, if we take a look at that guy, um, you know, chlorine has a electronegativity value of three and a half. So three and a half minus three and a half is zero. They are going to share perfectly equally. Um, if we take a look at a different, you know, two different atoms that might have a nonpolar covalent um, uh, kind of bond between, um, we can take a look at carbon and hydrogen. Carbon has an electronegativity value of 2.5, hydrogen 2.1, and so again, that difference is 0.4, which is less than the 0.49, so again, this is nonpolar covalent, where they're sharing those electrons equally. So because there is no charges, there are no um, real attraction between the molecules, right? Um, <clears throat> we're going to find out that there is like super, super, super weak, very weak attractions, um, between nonpolar molecules called um, dispersion, I'll write it down here on the side, dispersion 
um, or what we call um, van der Waals. Van der Waals, after the guy who figured this out. Um, attractions or um, forces. So dispersion or van der Waals forces um, that do kind of, you know, hold these guys together um, just slightly and it only has to ha only happens um, if there is a electron fluctuation in the um, molecule itself. So for example, remember those electrons are like speeding around um, the, at the nucleus of the atoms and um, at any one instance all the electrons could be on one side of the atom like the left side and then maybe in this molecule all the electrons for an instance um, are on the right side. So that kind of, you know, puts up very weak, slight negative and positives so that they attract each other. But for our purposes, we're going to say there's really no good attraction between these nonpolar covalents. And um, because of that, they don't stick at all. And so they're usually found as gases at room temperatures. Um, because they've got no attraction. So um, any gas that you've got at a room temperature is likely a nonpolar covalent molecule. Uh, if we think about the common gases, O2, oxygen, um, right? Methane is a gas made up of C and H's um, that is nonpolar covalent. Um, carbon dioxide is a nonpolar um, covalent gas, even though the bond is polar, um, the overall um, because it pulls in equal and opposite directions, the overall molecule is nonpolar, like we found out in our FET lab. Um, and so usually gases are nonpolar um, covalent in nature overall. And so uh, in order to actually make them stick or come together as a liquid or solid, um, then you'd have to actually cool it down a whole lot. So if you've ever heard of liquid nitrogen, Nitrogen is a gas. It's what makes up 78% of our atmosphere. So um, nitrogen is typically a gas at room temperature. And um, to get it in a liquid form, they have to cool it down to really, really, really low temperatures. Um, so liquid nitrogen is nitrogen at a very, very low temperature. Just so that, um, you know, if you slow the molecules down enough, then they will kind of stick together. <laughs> Um, at that temperature and become a liquid or a solid. All right, uh, but that's kind of our intro to um, electronegativity and how it affects the intermolecular forces of molecules.